Hey John, you ever realised how the front of cars kind of look like faces? Yeah, the queen! Gotcha! Man, I love cars. It has the best music. You know exactly what song that is. It has the best graphics. This came out in 2006. You know what else came out in 2006? Over the Hedge. Flushed Away. Monster House, ladies and gentlemen. Monster House. The animation on this has probably aged worse than the moon landing footage. Wait, wait, wait. This is going to go down in history. Shouldn't we film it on more than Steve's Nokia? And no other franchise has made movies more relatable about being a literal car than Cars. Cars 1 was all about the importance of slowing down and making connections. Cars 2. And Cars 3 dealt with the harsh reality of what to do when you get too old for your one purpose in life. But apparently, half of you punks despise Cars for no good reason. I hear a lot of people make the argument they could all just be humans instead. Well okay, you really haven't thought that one through, buddy. Because by that logic, every single movie with people could also be cars. Batman cars. I'm that car. Star Wars cars. I am your car though. No! Screw it. Fifty Shades of Grey cars. Ah, now I got you thinking. Now the new show, Cars on the Road, is actually pretty weak. Pixar has lent completely into the fact that our attention spans as a species are now collectively worse than a baby with ADHD in a room full of baby toy salesmen. Every cut is snappy and quick. It never wastes your time on a world building scene or lets you piece together the story like Pixar often allows the viewer to do. One of the main appeals of Pixar, however, is that their animation combine a fun children's movie idea with a tough philosophical adult issue and masterfully weave the two together. But funny car trip seven minute episodes are essentially broken down into first two minutes set up the basic plot, four minutes of jokes, then one minute leaving the set. And this format allows no time to just slow down and tell any sort of complex story. So what Pixar's done to appeal to adults is they've taken a shortcut. They've filled the show with references to adult movies. The Haunted House episode is like The Shining. The Cave Car episode is animated in stop motion. It does give Pixar a chance to explore a bunch of different possibilities in the car universe. Haven't I always said Mad Max would be good if the main characters were all the actual cars? Haven't I always said that? Yeah, yeah, you have always said that. But the short length of the episodes makes it impossible to add any sort of depth. Imagine if the Mad Max episode had gone deep into the complexities of cars that have to rebuild themselves using parts they scavenge in the wasteland. It would be a masterpiece. I shouldn't be too harsh though since, well, I don't know if you follow Pixar lore, but deep in a hidden underground cavern, there is a scroll that states we are all destined to evolve into these car creatures. But don't lose hope. Being a car is going to be great. No more toilet breaks on road trips, just recirculate it back through your body. Never be too hot or cold, you have your own personal internal heating and cooling. And when you're crying yourself to sleep every night, you won't have to wipe your tears manually anymore. Windscreen wipers. Anyway, Cars on the Road, 3 out of 10. Needed more chick kicks. Good chicka! Good chicka! Good chicka! <laughs> hey, where you been, McQueen? I've been kind of lonely. Nobody to hang out with. I mean, except the Dynaco folks. Oh, and the twins, of course. You know the twins, the ones that used to be your fans, but now they're my.